Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up the reactive skill ability icons for our heads up display. So if you take a look at the reference image that's being displayed on the screen at the moment, at the bottom center you are going to have three icons. One for your whirlwind ability, one for your helicopter ability, and one for your leap ability. Now, these are going to be going darker or lighter depending on whether or not you have enough rage or attack energy to use those. And that's exactly what we'll be covering in today's video. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you've got the latest version of the project files as within there you have got these skill icons that I've made here. So you can see I've got the helicopter, leap and whirlwind icon and there's also a dark version of each of these which we're going to be switching to if they do not have enough of that energy to do the attack. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Unreal Engine. So what you want to do within Unreal Engine is go to your user interface folder that you've created. If you can't find it, it's under Mech Combat, User Interface, and within here, what we want to do is select our skill images for Helicopter, Helicopter Dark, Leap, Leap Dark, and Whirlwind, and Whirlwind Dark as well. Just go ahead and drag and drop to import those into the engine. Now, what you're gonna notice is at the images that you've got here, they're gonna look exactly the same in your content browser. The only reason for that is because the content browser does not show the transparency on there. Um, but once you bring it into your UI widget, it is going to look very different. So let's start importing this into our UI. So for that, we need to hop over to our blueprints folder under, under Mech Combat and Blueprints and open up your HUD widget. What we're going to be doing inside of here is creating three images. So we've got one, two and three and with these we are going to be creating a binding for these to make them change the appearance based on values those values are going to be the amount of attack energy we've got so if they've got enough attack energy for the first one then it's going to be lit up if they don't then it's going to be dark and all of that good stuff so what you want to do is quickly try and make these roughly square and you also want to make them roughly the same size. The best way to do this is to just get a size, for example with the first one, up in the top right hand corner in the details, size X and Y, set this to 64 by 64. Just do the same thing for each and every one of these on the X and Y and what that is going to give you is three little cubes or rather squares that are exactly the same shape. And with this, we can then put our icons into them. What you also want to do to make sure that they stay at the bottom center of our screen is just anchor them to the bottom center so they all stay aligned and they all stay in that position regardless of the type of monitor or screen resolution that you're using. So once you've done that, what we can do is start working on the code which is actually going to change the appearance. Now, what we need to do is within our HUD widget, we need to have access to the variable for that attack energy. So that's something that we've got to keep in mind and include in our binding. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we're going to do is select the very first image that we've got here. With this, this is going to be what we've set up for our whirlwind ability, which is key binded to one on the keyboard. So with this, under appearance and brush, we are going to create a binding. And then with this, we're going to drag get brush zero or whatever this function name is, uh, name is and give yourself a bit of space. From this, what we're going to be doing is casting to the third person character. As the third person character, you want to get the player character. And then with this, as third person character, we need access to the attack energy. So get attack energy. And what we can do with this now is run a branch check. And depending on the result of that branch check, we can essentially just change the image from the light version to the dark version. So what we're going to do is after we cast to the third person character, we're going to create a branch. For the condition, what we're doing is checking to see if the float is greater than or equal to. So your A 
should be your attack energy and B is the required amount for that ability. Now the whirlwind was the more powerful ability and as such we made it require free attack energy. What I'm going to do is quickly press play and test that. So the first one, if I use it, it takes away free energy. As such, open up your HUD widget and check to see if they have got their free energy required. What we're going to be doing with this now is selecting our return node, pressing Ctrl C to copy that and Ctrl V to paste it. And then for the true and false, we just got two different return nodes. For the return value, this is where we're going to be setting the image. The way that we're going to do this is drag out from the return value and make brush from texture. And we're going to need one of these and then another one of these into the second one. And then for the texture itself, this needs to be our icons. So if they have got enough energy, then we need to be using the light one. So pop over to our folder for user interface and then get whirlwind. And then with that selected, just use selected asset and content browser. And then for this one here, you can either do the same thing again, or you can just search for it manually and use whirlwind dark. If we go ahead and hit compile now, what we should be able to do is go into the game and you can see it is the light version of the image because we have got enough energy. If I use it enough times and go down to zero, you can see it is now faded out and it's a little bit harder to see that. So you can see the functionality for the reactive icons that's all working. So having said that, what we now need to do is simply just replicate that for our other two abilities. So you want to create bindings for these other two. So what we're going to do is select the second image now, create a binding for this. And what I'm going to do to save myself a little bit of time is I'm going to go and grab my get brush zero and within here, I am just going to copy all of this code. And then I'm going to go back into get brush one. And what I'm also going to do is give these functions names. So get brush zero, which is the first one, which we created. I'm going to give this the name a whirlwind reactive icon. And then the second one, I'm also going to give this the name and this is going to be called whirlwind, sorry, this is going to be called helicopter reactive icon, just like that. I'm going to delete this return node and paste all of that code in that we just used there. Now with this, we need to make a couple of changes. Our attack ability for our helicopter is going to cost slightly less. If you remember, this costs two energy instead of three. As such, we've got to put this into our branch condition and set this to two. We also need to change the image from whirlwind to helicopter. So helicopter and then helicopter dark at the bottom here. And then if we go ahead and check this out, hit compile, hit play. You can see we've now got that second icon in there. If I press two, it should take away two energy. And if I get myself too low all the way down to zero, it is going to be faded out so we can't use it. So one last time, we're just going to do the same thing for this third icon that we've got. So create another binding. And then with this, we are going to give this the name leap reactive icon. And we're going to delete the return node that we've got here and paste in the code that we used before. Once again, we need to check to see how much uh, energy that our leap is going to cost. So press play and then press free. And as you can see, it only used two energy. So replace, go into your graph and replace your free with a two. That is the amount of energy that it requires. And then all we're doing from here is simply just changing the images. So the last one should be leap and also leap dark. And that is pretty much everything for our reactive icons. What I also wanted to do was take a moment to put some little pieces of text on the screen to tell the player how they can fire off these abilities. So the first icon is going to have a little one over it. The second icon is going to have a two over it. And the third icon is going to have a three over it. Now, the reason why I didn't include that as part of the image is so that you can change that. If you've changed your key bindings and you want to represent that on the screen, all you've got to do is just change this text. So this first piece of text here 
I'm just going to set the content text in the details panel to one. And then I'm just going to have this hovered above the bottom uh, right. Going to add another piece of text and I'm going to set the content text for this to two. And once again, all I'm doing is just hovering this up above the bottom right and one last piece of text and this is going to hover above the bottom right again and we're going to be setting this to free. Now you don't have to set these to the numbers. Like I said, if you've changed your key bindings, that is what you want to change your values to. Also, if you think your images are a bit too small, if you think 64 by 64 is too small, by all means, you can change this to 100 by 100 if you want to. It's entirely up to you. You guys have got the freedom and the knowledge to go ahead and do that. It's entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do, as you can see here, I've just changed the X and the Y to 300 on each of these. And what you will notice, I need to make sure this is centered again. Move all of your text, move all of your images if you haven't done so already. Um, but for now, this is looking good. So what I'm going to do is just a second from now, I'm going to pop into the game, hit compile and take a look at how this looks. As you can see, the text is not in line and the reason for that is simply because we haven't anchored it. So select your text and anchor it to the bottom center just like you did with your images. Bottom center on all three of those, hit compile and hit play and you've now got your ability icons and as you use these, as you run out, they are going to go dark. So we've still got a little bit more to work on for our damage systems. We still need to set up energy attack, energy regeneration. That's something that we'll be working on, but you will see us include that as we go deeper into the series. For now, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep curating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.